Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's Insight Session. It's the Analyst Angle portion, day two of coverage of Boomi World Live and Denver. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got two great analysts, industry analysts here, Merv Adrian, IT market strategy, well known in the data space, former Gardner, uh, really been chronicling the data journey with theCUBE for 14 years. Great to see you, You've been Many a great years. friend of theCUBE, and you're a um, tier, tier one industry analyst, and, and, and it's great to know you. Sean Rogers with Bark, you're out doing some cool stuff now, again, you guys, we've seen the movie. How many cycles of innovation have you got been, we all uh, been through? Pretty many. Two? Okay, two. <laughs> I'm that young. No, many. Many. Thanks for coming on the Analyst Angle the here. The wheel, then the industrial revolution, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, every, in every new cycle, um, there's a tailwind for somebody. There's always an inflection point. You know, we've been, I've been very vocal. I love this wave. I think it's the combination of many ways. I wish I was 25 is my favorite quote, uh, although sometimes I do act 25. But, the opportunities, if you are in the right position right now, you have an opportunity to really go faster. Uh, and data is the center common, common center point here at Merv. People who have done their work grinding it out, whether you're in a regulated industry or not, if you've got good data practices right now, you're kind of set up for, the, for this wave right now. What's your thoughts on this? So what's the, this inflection point mean? Because companies like Boomi, grinding it out pre-Gen AI, now almost pole position. Yep. to transform from a small iPads market to potentially a huge like market opportunity. Well, I'll start by questioning your assumption. In general, most people, even the ones who think they have a good handle on their data, they don't. Um, they got multiple copies of it in multiple places that don't agree with one another. They've got a ton of quality problems. They've got a ton of integration problems. And when they think about this pivotal moment, which I completely agree with you about, this transformational shift to an AI-based architecture model, everybody starts with their own island and assumes that everything connects to it. So whether you're a data guy, or whether you're a quality guy, or whether you're, you know, pick, pick your technology stack, everybody says it's going to start with me and everybody's going to connect to me. And everybody abstracts away from that statement to say, and you guys can worry about that part of it. Boomi is different. Boomi has always been focused on how will we put the pieces together, and that itself is much more automatable and much more governable than starting with your own island. So for me to come to this event and hear the articulation of their vision for how expansive they're going to be in carrying that forward, it's been very impressive. So what's your take? I mean, you've got a lot going on. You know the cloud game, you've seen the scale, you've seen the data uh, fidelity challenges, the large language models have hallucinations. Small's the new big, you know? Yeah, huh? and, and <laughs> everything old is new again, uh, right? All of these things that, uh, Company, I, I agree with your premise. If you didn't have your act together with your data, you're on the sidelines already right now Could with Gen AI magnified. and everything that's happening around AI. I, I got to talk at a session this morning here at the program. I had a slide up there that talked about five different parts of the data world that if you don't have your act together on everything from streaming in real time all the way on up to integration and uh, quality, these are not new topics, man. These topics yeah. have been around a long time there where everybody's stubbing their toe. It's what's slowing yeah. people down. So if you're aligned with smart companies, and yeah. I agree, I think Boomi's in a good position. I'm, right I'm now. fascinated with Boomi, guys. I want to get your reaction because I want, and thoughts, because what gets, I've covered them for about six years. We've kind of been watching them. I like the culture. What got my attention is they had the similar vibe I saw with ServiceNow in the early days. Mm. Very loyal customer base, very focused on user interface. They solved real problems that were quite frankly, the, you know, in the bowels of IT that you know, you got to go in there and get dirty. Uh, and we know what we're talking about here, right? So iPaaS, they call it the iPaaS as platform as a service, more cloud vibe, but you know, IT is complex, right? So complexity of IT, we know that. By design. By design. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to the, yeah. the solving IT complex, IT complexity by adding more complexity. It used to be the old game, now it's like it's got to be easier. Okay, but now, Boomi's got this acquisition craze going on. They're going after the APIs. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Clearly, the APIs is now link, is now critical infrastructure. They call it I, API sprawl. That's not necessarily a bug. That's a feature, right? That's very cloud-like, right? So if you let it, yeah. So you got APIs. Mm -hmm. That's a critical area. Do you solve it bottoms up like Kong is a doing like a data dog model, developer focus, or do you come in with the IT? And I noticed that was something here. Clearly, Boomi's saying, look, we're an IT agnostic. 
but everyone's saying they're IT agnostic on, uh, on uh, our platform. So you agnostic think about on, who, on API management systems. Who are you trying to engage? Who are you selling to? Who's your audience? If you're talking to programmers, talk about APIs. But that comes out of a services oriented architecture model, and services are passive, agents are active. We want to build an architecture that does stuff, not an architecture that sits there and waits to be asked. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that flip, you wind up with a model where if I can provide you with a framework mm -hmm. for turning these things loose to do what needs to be done in a governed way, I've got a completely different thought about how my architecture is constructed. And it is that different. And it's why I think different means differentiated. It's why I think what they're saying right now is so interesting and so marketable, frankly. Sean, how do you see that too? Because Irv's showing a good point. If it's going to be a radical, I, that's my word, you didn't say radical, I'm saying it's radical okay. shift. Good. Okay, in architecture, meaning everything's flipped upside down. Yeah. Data modeling, governance, all that stuff. Observability changes radically, now you got all these things going on. You got a, it's a systems architecture almost. It is. It's, uh, we talked about control planes today a little yes, bit. Yes, we do. With what they're doing. It's going to enable their customers to do things that they can't do today, but do it in a governed, secure sort of way. API sprawl is real. Uh, the agent sprawl will happen as well. You need a place to monitor and watch mm -hmm. and manage the system so that you can get what as Murph said, goes from sort of a passive environment to a very active one. Yeah, yeah. And that active one's where the value is. You know, the agents coming online is interesting. They talk about connectivity. So I had to ask um, the, the question, connectivity like a network? No, 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 Con connectors. Because remember the joke on stage Steve Lucas made about um, get rid of your uh, marketing automation platform, hence he worked at Marketo. Yep. We all know what kind he of- He knows whereof he speaks. So yeah. he's right, those old school connectors, the old, almost the old XML days, but a lot of the API stuff, they're all coming out of that world. Remember the old, you worked at Tibco back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, web services is still growing up, right? So if you look at web services, it's only what? 20 years old maybe, in, since again, inception? Again, the difference is who's going to do the work? I've provided a service, now you have to go build something with it. As opposed to, I've built an agent, it's going to go do something for me. That, that implies another important thing that has to happen. I have to trust this thing because it's going to act on my behalf. So the degree to which we make this stuff observable and explainable, is the path we have, the door we have to go through yeah. before anything happens here. And that's the governance story. So maybe for yeah. one of the first times ever, we're actually putting this at the heart of this transformation, that we are going to get this right, we're going to make it governed, and then we're going to turn a lot of control over to it. So yeah, we better yeah. be able to That's a great point, and by the way, that's a great point, and that's new. It's been it talked about, new. it's been yeah. talked about, kind of like, hand waving, but now the consequences, yeah. can you quantify the consequence of not taking care of business? Because <laughs> ultimately, the consequence is not having AI. I mean, yeah. right? Transparency and trust are going to be paramount here, and visibility into the system. You know, you're going to find yourself down the road enjoying the interactivity from agents, and you're going to ask questions, well, what did that agent just do? Yeah. How did it do it? Uh, it's going to be a big part of it. So I'm going to ask you guys a question I know you can answer, because Boomy guy couldn't answer, because I don't think he wanted to answer it, but I'll, I'll put it, serve it up to you guys. So in every um, platform game we see, when the platform's involved in tools, platforms have to enable value the value proposition, whether it's an abstraction layer, whatever, platforms, it's, enabling tech, it's an enabling technology, quotes. In the key inflection points, it's been a disruptive enabler. The distinction is disruption. It implies something goes away. Okay, we've seen, past decade, categories of venture capital, AI ops, observability, <laughs> security, some security tools, governance, okay. Big data. Yeah. What gets disrupted? If we go down and, and this go, if your thoughts go to the next level, okay. if you believe what you said, I do, it's going to be system change, flip script. What goes away? Obviously, observability and governance are instantly impacted. We see that right now. You mentioned those two. Those things will change. Certainly, the categories will change. Yeah. What goes away? Who wins? What dies and what emerges? Can you guys share your thoughts on, on, on I, what goes the, away? The first part that popped into my head is you're going to see massive disruption in the data management space across so many different disciplines. The automation that'll happen, 
there will be replacement of human things that we're used to having, which will speed everything along. It's very easy for AI to work in that environment and do well. And I think that I said it this morning in my talk, next three years, exponential growth and disruption in the data management space in a way that we see it coming, but it's not 100% here yet. Or what's your thoughts so, on disruption? So what withers is mundane. It's like maintenance, yeah. right? Making sure the backups run, all the stuff that observability tracks for us now, we're just going to make sure it happened instead. And you quoted Steve, I'll quote Steve too. He said something I really loved. He said, don't show me the report, show me the result. We're going to focus on outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to focus on actions not capabilities and processes that somebody else has to act on. So the yeah. people who are going to rise out of this are architects, yeah. designers, and visionaries. The people who are going to kind of fade away are plumbers, yeah. you know, people who are sweeping up the remains and reporting yeah. on what happened. Yeah. Um, it, is, it has a very positive feel to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you think about the panel that we had today of the integration partners, there's, there's something that, there's a little cognitive dissonance there. If it's all so easy, why does everybody have to use an SI to get it done? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> when we change the model, so it's not about how do we do the plumbing, but what's the vision and what's the action we yeah. want, all the people who are certified for the SIs are going to be business designers, business visionaries, not guys who understand how the technology works. Their yeah. certifications are going to be completely different. I mean, different. consultants sometimes can be like therapy. You, know, you, you want to talk to somebody, <laughs> all right? Yeah. Give me your watch, I'll tell you what time it is pay me by the hour, uh, get the next gig. Primal uh, therapy, um, I think you scream you know, a lot. So, yeah. 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 And, and again, I think of disruptive innovation. For me, I remember when I was, because I worked on, uh, right at a college, into the you know, mini and main for IBM and then HP, and then they had those mini computers. I remember with TCP IP, that was a disruptive innovation. That basically eliminated uh, proprietary NOSes and opened up, again, the world that we live in now. So I think from a disruption standpoint, what I get excited about is you're starting to hear terms like, okay, observability, I have to have my own object store. So you got hyper-convergence at the nexus of, say, things like what I'm observing. Well, if agent's going to do all these things, every app could have their own unique observability algorithm. It's not so there's a no, feature. That doesn't make, that's not a company anymore. Mm. That's a feature. Yeah. So that's one. AI ops, what was AI ops? Well, all just pre-programmed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not generative. So generative is an interesting term. So yeah, I think it's going to flip the script across every layer of the stack. And, the, and people are talking about it. So that's clear, which is fun for us. We're in the media business. You guys are in, you have to research a lot of this stuff. So I want to ask you, how do you sniff out the bullshit from the vendors? Um, and I know that over the years you guys have done so many briefings, we've I've talked to them. You're suggesting that there's bullshit? Well, there's conjecture. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, I mean, I can tell you right now, we're seeing our AI fall in the three categories as we start scaling our data sets. And I've heard this from other uh, big data providers as well or that have market data. You've got vendor conjecture. Sure. What they say and do. Yeah. What they say yeah. and do. Their marketing material, their speeches, and other analysts who parrot their conjecture. They're number one at projecting people that get paid to be a mouthpiece for a vendor. They come up as very highly influential analysts in that AI algorithm. But a lot of times the customer algorithms, what customers know and think, is often different than the conjecture. That data set is completely different. Real research analysts talk to customers and practitioners. And finally, the third data set that's emerging is third party research data. So, you know, reports, market shares from other sources, so multi-sourced research. So, customer conjecture data, customer, no, vendor, customer, third-party research. Okay, all three. Sometimes the, the customers see it differently. Oh, yeah. They so always see it differently they always because see they're it differently. actually using it. So, this is what vendors do. They hire analysts to help them figure out that out. So, here's the question. When a generative AI, when someone who's got chops walks in your door, or your Zoom, or your meeting, how do you know if they got the right stuff? Is there like a, are there a tell signs now with the generative, not the, not the previous stuff. Him? If we Go tell them, we'll have to kill them. Tell them. Go ahead. Okay. Tell him. How do you know that they got the, they got the, or they're directionally correct, or they're just BSing? Well, there's, there's, there's two elements, right? The first is the one you just outlined. Does it, does it feel like it's on track? Are they veering off in some odd direction that doesn't make any sense? That one's pretty easy. We, we, we pretty much get that one right away. The second one's a little more subtle, and it has to do with how they're communicating what they're telling you and the degree of vagueness that surrounds it. 
we, we hear a lot of pitches about things that are going to happen at some indeterminate time that we're not prepared to tell you about. I dismiss those pretty fast. Like a reference architecture? Or, or a product with no due date, no preview date, no private preview date, no genera general availability date, no customers to talk to. This is fine. In the AI world, we call that a hallucination in another context, <laughs> okay? Um, come back to me when you can put some dates on these things and let's have an interesting yeah. conversation and, and please let me talk to a customer. Well, certainly production using. workloads, evidence, of any evidence of any kind. Yeah, yeah slide, slideware is a problem right now. Yeah. We're, we're seeing more slideware right now at this moment, this inflection point. Um, I think the last time I saw it was during the big, uh, big data Hadoop craze. Uh, everybody was a little behind, everybody yeah. went, oh my gosh, I got to catch up. We saw a lot of slide where we're seeing tons of it right now. I know that the analyst community is pushing vendors specifically to say, hey, I, I, I want it noted in the corner. Are you in preview, are you in beta? Do you have a GA date? I think that that's very important. I got asked today by an end user that question. What, yeah. what do you watch for? On the customer side, that's interesting because as always, they're two steps behind all of us in the tech space. We're mm -hmm. always running faster than our customers mm -hmm. are. And I think the catch up problem that staying current with yeah. uh, AI information, man, this is the yeah. hardest chore yeah. I've, I've, I've experienced. And there's a very important piece of information that comes out of the study that we just did with, with several hundred yeah. customers asking them about yeah. organization and technology choices. Everybody, almost everybody, nobody, there's never a 100% number in these studies, but the biggest choice of who am I going to turn to first is I'm going to start with the guys I'm already working with whose stuff I know works, and I'm going to say, have yeah. you got something here? And that's customers in general. Yeah. No matter how interesting the bright, what you like to call, call the bright, bright shiny, shiny technology. Toys of tech. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when it walks in the door and it sounds really good, that's nice yeah. and look and listen. And then go to your trusted providers and say, have you got one of these? And kick the tires on that thing before you do anything. It's one less integration step. And it's one more piece of confidence that this thing may actually work. That counts for a lot. What's interesting too is that the whole analyst relations, public relations, now influencer relations, investor relations yeah. are all changing because technology is impacting every product. Yeah. And so it's not just one little easy assignment, you have a lot of things to worry on. Um, as a big, we don't, as a we big don't need new technology for hallucinations. We've been doing that for years. <laughs> all right, let's, but, let's wrap but, up yeah. this analyst angle. Great for the commentary. Thanks for the commentary, by the way, appreciate yeah. that. I'd like to do a whole set on analyst relations and, and how the world's changing for these vendors. Um, Booming. Okay, you sat through, saw Steve Lucas, great executive. Um, he's been there, done that. He's got a good gig here. I mean, Boomi could blow up huge. Yep. I mean, I see a lot of service now going on, like the vibes. All the nice things are in there, good culture, great customer base, very loyal, great community. Product chops are bringing in people from the outside to know what they're doing. And it's got kind of a founder-led vibe, even though it's kind of like Boomi, but it's got the core group. What's your take? That's my take. What, what do you guys see as Boomi's analyst relations? I'll, I'll go first. I had the privilege of interacting with them uh, in, in my normal work. I was at Dell uh, when Boomi was still inside the Dell software portfolio. Got to interact with the team there. I'm not surprised they've landed where they are. I'm a fan. I like what I'm seeing. I think they have a great opportunity ahead of them. So, great. yeah, positive for me. They see an opportunity, yeah. and to your point, Steve is a very articulate spokesperson for yeah. it. There's a big difference between firms whose executives are not only personable but knowledgeable. Yeah. Um, Steve understands what they're doing, yeah. and he's very much present in the direction of the architecture. Yeah. That translates, it's palpable, yeah. and, the, and the, the announcements they made here are very demonstrable that they have a bigger yeah. target in mind than what they've already done, and it's, yeah. uh, it's compelling. I like, I like how they got their hands on the key levers. It, I, recognizing API sprawl as a key critical infrastructure opportunity, that's like very Amazonian-like in its thinking. The fact that they have customer use cases, that they have plenty of data to look at, and look at real-time activity around what's going on in the customer base, is going to give them a massive holistic data picture I'll That's a you, massive opportunity I'll there. offer you one more thought if you have time for yeah. it. So everybody in the software business has one large category of competitors they all have to worry about, and that's the big platforms, the hyperscalers, right? What's interesting economically about that issue is that all of those guys are very happy to have software partners that drive usage of their platform. So they're much happier partnering than they are with fighting. 
the natural partnership for these guys to help those platforms help their customers yeah. integrate their technologies, it's win-win yeah. for them. Yeah, so it checks the compute box out of the gate, and number two, higher level service opportunity as headroom. So Boomi's got a very Amazonian-like opportunity themselves to, to capture. Guys, great stuff. Let's end quickly with a plug. I know you got new gigs going on. You guys are, you guys are still banging away, grinding on the research piece. We'll start with you. Quick commercial of what you're going on. Put the plug in for your firm. Um, mostly my work is just working with a couple of key clients in the software space, but I had the opportunity recently to partner with Sean, with Bark, on a primary research study, which after all, this is about data. Um, there's a lot of slides being projected in a lot of events right now on research that's two years old. Our study was done in February. You want yeah. to know what's going on in AI right now, read our research. <laughs> is it a multi-client multi study? That's a plug. Is it a multi-client yeah. yep. study? Yeah. Yep. We need more research like that, guys. Yep. Yep. And, yep. And, your, and your firm? Same thing for me. Bark is growing. I represent uh, our US-based business, and we are moving Bark away from being a really incredible regional analyst firm. Uh, we've got 25 people covering data and analytics worldwide, okay. and uh, we're making sure we're more global. Awesome, oh, yeah. great stuff. Great to see you guys both got great pedigree experience, legends. Good to Part see of you. the Cube Collective now on the Cube. Yeah. Appreciate your support. Thanks for, for the commentary and coming on the Cube Pleasure analyst angle you, session. All right, guys, Thank thanks you, so much. Sir. Okay, I'm John Furrier. Day two is over. We'll be back on day three after this short break. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. Check out our coverage on siliconangle.com and thecube.net. Thanks for watching. <laughs>